Hello and welcome to the first feature interview of the semester. I'm Kelsey Hubbard. As an Emory and Henry student, there are many core requirements for graduation. Study abroad is one of these requirements. Students have gone all over the world to places such as Scotland, India, England, Costa Rica, and many more. But this past semester, a group of students got to go on a trip of a lifetime. In May, the Emory and Henry Concert Choir went to South Africa on their international tour. I have on set with me Dr. Elise Hecker and Concert Choir President Christina Druin. Thank you guys so much for joining me on set. Our pleasure. Thanks. So, Dr. Hecker, I have a question for you first. Yes. Why South Africa? I know you've been talking about it for a while, but why specifically that place? Uh, it's a place that's near and dear to my heart. Um, I did a lot of my doctoral research on South African choral music uh, and had lived there for a period of time and researched a lot of the folk music. Um, it's, a, it's a rather poor country or developing country, which um, means that their musical output is leans more towards chorus because orchestras and bands are expensive. So there are a lot of choirs and exchanges with that, uh, that culture and that environment are really, well, they're really rewarding for me. I hope they were <laughs> rewarding for everyone else. <laughs> and Christina, what were, I guess, some of your thoughts before you went? What kind of things did you expect to see before you went there? Well, I didn't really know much about South Africa, you know, before I took, you know, Dr. Hecker's class, but um, I did take a class before we left, so I had some expectations and I kind of kind of knew, you know, some things that I would be expecting to see, but it definitely wasn't what I thought at all. Like it was so pretty there. I've never seen a more beautiful place ever. Um, you know, so it was really really cool to get to see those, but also seeing some of like the townships, it was really, really hard to see that because you can hear about it all day long, but when you go and experience and actually go and see it, it's really, really hard to, to take in. And what are some of the, I guess, the big things that you noticed that were different between South Africa and the United States? Um, there, it, it's just so pretty. I don't <laughs> even know how to like explain it, but um, some of the views I have never, you know, like, it, it was like looking at a postcard the whole entire time, and it was it, it was unreal. Um, yeah, <laughs> a lot of mountains, you right. know, were very pretty. But it was very similar, you know. There was like a city, you know, just like cities here. So, yeah, cool. And you said that you've been there before, obviously. Mm -hmm. What is different about this trip than like past trips? I think when I had been there before, it was before the World Cup had had been in South Africa, and I noticed a. a, a much larger growth in infrastructure um, and just the ease of transportation of even paying for things with a debit card which really wasn't <laughs> mm -hmm. that possible the first few times I, I visited uh, it just seemed a lot more tourist friendly if we could say that um, not that it wasn't before but um, just a little more modernized right yeah and so what I guess, talk me through the itinerary of what you guys went through while you were there, because you were there for a couple weeks, I believe. Yeah, just short of two weeks. Uh, we spent the first five or six days in mm -hmm. Cape Town. Um, we did some running out into some of the smaller communities, some of the townships that Christina mentioned, um, which to, to be specific, those are essentially the, the urban slums on the outskirts of a lot of the big cities. And um, I think we see poverty there that we can't really quite imagine being Americans. Right. Um, so we did some of that. We went out to the wine region, which was just <laughs> horrible. Um, and uh, then we, we flew up to Johannesburg and spent some time there and in Pretoria, the, the capital, and worked at the University of Pretoria for a little while. So about half and half, I would say. Right. And it is a choir trip, so you guys definitely perform places. Can you talk about the places that you did perform at? Do you want to take yeah, that? Yeah, okay. <laughs> so there was one uh, university that we, that we went to, and we got to perform with um, a South African choir. So it was really, really cool to experience that because here, when you perform, usually the audience is very quiet and they don't do, you know, they uh, applaud when they're supposed to and that type of thing. Well, the audience in South Africa, they'll sing along with you and they'll get up and dance, and it's just, it's really cool experience to, you know, be singing with other people in the audience and it's really emotional too because you know especially when we went to sing like the national anthem everybody got up and was singing it with us it was just really like uh, it was just such a great experience and then we also sang at one of the townships um, as like a fundraiser mm -hmm. um, and it was so cool and it was the same thing you know everybody was dancing and singing we had kids running up <laughs> to us like singing and dancing with us 
So it was a really, really great experience. And then do you want to talk about your friend? And yeah, supporting? yeah. Then when we went, that, most of that took place in Cape Town. Mm -hmm. Um, when we went up to Johannesburg, we then sang with the University of Pretoria, just outside there, and did got to perform a piece I think that became one of the favorites mm -hmm. in Dodana with the gentleman who wrote the piece and his collegiate choir. I think that was pretty spectacular. Yeah. Uh, and then we also went into the township of Soweto, which is the largest township in South Africa, where Desmond Tutu and Nelson Mandela are from. And we did a choral exchange there as well. It was a little more casual, but got to sing for each other and eat a traditional African meal. Uh, I think what struck me is every student had to write a reflection paper on their way home. And I anticipated that maybe their favorite musical experience, I asked that question, um, that it would be the big concerts at the universities where we had great crowds, real, a lot of very lively. <laughs> yeah, free wine afterwards. Yeah, true, true. <laughs> um, but, uh, I mean, with almost no exceptions, everyone said that performing in the townships, I mean, it, surrounded by poverty and, and probably people who had never met foreigners at all, mm -hmm. w that was their most memorable musical experience. And... I think that says a lot about the trip, but more importantly, I think it says a lot about our students. Right. And so you mentioned Desmond Tutu. Who is Desmond Tutu for people who aren't really sure? So he's an archbishop of the Anglican Church and, and is uh, s still practicing at the oldest Anglican Church in South Africa, St. George, in uh, Cape Town. He was instrumental in, in the breaking down of apartheid. This was the government-sanctioned racism that took place from 1948 to 1994 and uh, held rallies, did a lot of peace talks and walks, and um, if I might be so bold as to sort of compare him to Martin Luther King, uh, he and Nelson Mandela. And once apartheid fell, he was put in charge of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission hearings, where mostly um, Africans got to report on the atrocities that took place during the apartheid regime and he served on that. I think the, the hearings went on for over three years, and there are something like 27 volumes um, of, I guess, testimony that came from that. Uh, and he was in charge of all of it. And honestly feel that if, if he and Nelson Mandela had not worked so hard for a, a nonviolent reconciliation, I think the country would have broken into civil war, into a racial war. Um, I think he's responsible for saving millions of lives. Wow, it's amazing to be in. So basically, the really cool yeah. that we were able to be there and sing for him. That's awesome. I know we've yeah. got to wrap up real quick, but I, you brought some fun artifacts. Can you just like yeah. hold a couple up and see like, yeah. what they are? So we went to a market, and they had different little things that you can get. They had like bowls, and they had little, you know, little this is a little <laughs> elephant, and they engrave your name in it, which is really really cool. Um, and then I also bought some money back with me um, and it's got Nelson Mandela on it which is really cool um, so yeah well, it kind of awesome. looks like Monopoly money it's so yeah. colorful <laughs> well, it sounds amazing and you guys had a great experience and that's mm -hmm. that's really fantastic so um, thank you guys both for coming on set with me today thank you for thank having you. us um, I'm Kelsey Hubbard this has been your feature interview with Christina Dewan and Dr. Elise Hecker